vegetables are pollinated in two ways self pollination and cross pollination we are going to see that in detail in today's video welcome to roots to sprouts let's begin with some of the self pollinating vegetable plants like tomatoes eggplant chilies and many more self pollinating plants has a flower which has both male and female parts in the same flower let's take a closer look of the tomato flower there are four major parts in the self pollinating flowers the middle part of the flower is pistil which is female and it's surrounded by a male part called stamen tip of the pistil is called stigma and the bottom is blossom end or a ovary when pollen gets contact with the stigma the flower gets pollinated end up with fruit or vegetables let's see another self pollinating flower this is chili flower the stigma is the sticky knob at the top of the pistil the style which is the center part of the pistil is connected to the blossom end which is surrounded by a male part called stamen which has a pollen in it these self pollinating flowers do not need any help from pollinators the wind will do the best for them to get pollinated Let's look at the cross pollination. Who are these pollinators helps cross pollination? We all know bees are the best pollinators, but there are many other pollinators we are going to look in this video. Wild honey bees or native bees are most commonly known pollinators, but there are other several bees helps in pollination like bumblebee and manage bees. and also butterflies moth and wasps do the same there are handful of other insects flies and beetles and even one species of mosquitoes that are pollinators the bumblebee is an effective pollinator because of the pollinator technique called bus pollination Bus pollination does not require the bumblebee to enter the flower in order to gather the pollen like other bee have to do instead the heavy bumblebee clings to the bottom of the flower and vibrates its flight muscles producing a buzz sound this vibration causes pollen to fall out of the flower onto the bee's rear legs when the same bee goes to the next flower it passes the pollen which helps the female flowers to pollinate the black and yellow striped bug or no more than half an inch in length is called as a hoover fly which looks very similar to bee but small in size these hoover flies are widely considered to be your second most important pollinators after bees When their hairy bodies brushes against the flower stigma, pollen is transferred between the flies and the flowers and vice versa. The cabbage white butterfly seen here is one of the most common butterfly in the US. Although it appears mostly white with black markings on the top of its wings, underneath those wings are yellowish green. These butterflies pollinate plants as they feed on nectar from many flowers.
grey hair streaks butterflies benefits garden as many other butterflies, bees and small birds. These butterflies participate in mutual relationship with many flowering plants by receiving nectar and acting as a pollinator. Here comes moth pollination. This one looks very similar to butterfly but they are different. They mostly appears after dark and takes over the night shift for pollination. Some moths are active during day as you see here. The plants which have separate male and female flowers belongs to cucurbit family. That includes cucumber, lufa, watermelon, squash, zucchini and cucumelon. By looking at the rear side of the flower, you can identify which is male and female flower. The female squash flower, which you see here, carries the miniature squash at the back of the flower.